mental health challenges can coexist with manifesting your dreams. They can go hand in hand. If I hadn't have hit that record button that one day, I would probably still be doing that like IT job that I hated. Welcome to another episode of the Waffle Shop podcast. Another face-to-face -face waffle, which I'm very excited about. He's traveled a long way today. It's manifestation coach, Andy Downs. Welcome to the Waffle Shop. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and having me here. It's mad. I always get really, I mean, I can hear it in my voice now. Like I get quite giddy because it's like, one, people want to talk to me and two, people are actually like willing to like travel to come and say hello. Yeah, but I'm, I'm the same. Like I was getting a little bit giddy that you wanted to talk to me. I've had some pretty big names on this podcast and now you've got little old me. No, 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 no. It's, it's, these are the conversations I think I get more out of. No, I mean, no offense to the those people i'm not gonna <laughs> sag anyone off straight into it how are you doing you good i'm good yeah i'm good thank you like i say thank you for having me i'm more than happy to travel as far as i've traveled um break it up a little bit visit to my parents in stoke nice um funnily enough sorry i'm getting straight into the one no it's straight it's um good. i went to Warwick university oh which is okay based in coventry. yeah so and i've not been back to coventry since graduating so i was actually obviously really yeah. excited to see you and be on the podcast but I was also really excited to just be back in Coventry. It's like your old stomping ground. Yeah. Did you ever go to the Collie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, many a time. Okay. Is it still it's still there? Yeah. It's still lovely. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's a lovely, <laughs> lovely place to go. Oh, that's weird. I always think this when, because the, the people I work with are a similar age, but obviously I've never met them before until I worked with them. But there is always that thing like, I'm pretty sure we must have been at, like at a party or at the same nightclub or some event yeah. all at the same time. And we just yeah. didn't realize it. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Mm. That we've probably path crossed paths with yeah. lots of people before that we now interact with yeah. on a more regular basis. Well, before we get too deep and all, yeah. you know, all mm. things kind of things are meant to be that way and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I do a thing called the weekly waffle, which is something that has quite frankly got on my go that once I've spoke about it, it makes me feel better. Um, it doesn't actually make me feel better. Um, it's just a chance for me to <laughs> slag something off, <laughs> to be fair. Get it off your chest. Um, but the thing that's been winding me up this week is loud phone calls and being like on FaceTime in public without headphones in. I think it's quite attention seeking. And I understand like, you know, people forget the headphones and stuff, but there was a one particular case recently where someone next to me joined a meeting but they didn't put their headphones in and it was just unneth like it wasn't even like a proper meeting mm. but like i just think from a privacy point like just it just irritated me like just like go somewhere quiet and yeah. do this yeah so yeah that's that that's what's been winding me up yeah it's that <laughs> sort of people seem some people seem to have an unawareness don't they of what's going on around yes. them and how it might be affecting other people and it seems to be, especially the younger generation now, it seems to be perfectly acceptable to play their music really loud on a bus yeah, yeah. or a train or whatever and just expect everyone else yeah. to listen to it. Do you think it's just a sign of getting old? <laughs> because now you just said that, I was like, I put, I'm, at one point I probably was that <laughs> child. I don't know. I mean, obviously, when we were younger, we didn't have mobile devices That's true. that blared out really mm. loud music or phone calls. So maybe there's an element of that. No, I'm with Jealousy. you. I just think it's really rude. <laughs> yeah, no, it is rude. I, I think it is. And I think it's, it's, I think there should be a certain etiquette that should be followed if you're on FaceTime yeah. or having a meeting. Yeah. yeah. There should be certain laws put into place. Laws? <laughs> <laughs> we're taking, taking this all the way. Um, is there anything that gets on your nerves that you'd like to get off your chest? Do you know what? It's kind of similar in some ways to what you've just been talking about. But it's when you're walking along the street and someone just stops walking in front of you because they're either lost or they get a phone call with no awareness to who might be behind yeah. them. And almost, I'm quite a fast walker, usually because I'm rushing to places all the time. <laughs> so I'm like walking really fast down the street and then someone will just stop in the middle of the, in the middle of the pavement. That really winds me up. But it almost causes a bit of a, a pile up, doesn't it? Yeah. Because if someone's walking behind you and then you have to stop, yeah. that person's then going to have to stop yeah. who's behind you. Because then if I do walk into them, I then take on the responsibility and I'm then apologizing <laughs> to them for walking into them, even though actually it was their fault in the first place. <laughs> this is such a British thing to do, isn't it? It's like, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm not actually in the wrong. Yeah. You're in the wrong. Yeah. But I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
that's oh. why we need podcasts like this to get these things out because we are very British. We do. It's true. It's true. A lot of responsibility. And it's fair. And it, not to get all deep with it, but I think it's those little things that, especially if you're having a bad day, that can make your day ten times worse. Yeah. So. You know, we offer a little bit of light on the show. So hopefully, you know, you can listen to this. You can have a bit of a laugh along with it. And if there is anything that kind of gets on your nerves and you want to get involved, like I'm dying to hear what winds you up. So please just send them to me because I'm sick of moaning. I think my people, my people, not my people, the people who listen are probably sick of me moaning as well. So I want to hear what winds you up. So get in touch. I want to dive into your journey now. So obviously I thought we've, we've connected a few times, like on Instagram and, you know, some of your, one of your posts in particular, like I really resonated with recently, but for anyone who doesn't quite know who you are, like who are you? <laughs> right. So I'm Andy Downs. I am, um, was born in Stoke-on-Trent, grew up in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, and the then, home of Robbie Williams. Say again. Is he the home of Robbie Williams? It is the home of Robbie Williams. That's usually what gets asked when I tell people yeah. I'm from Stoke on Do you know him? Uh, no, no, <laughs> don't know him. I think one of my aunties might have gone to school with his sister or someone. But anyway. Wow. Um, let's not waffle too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, yeah, grew up in Stoke on Trent. And um, for a long time, actually, so when I went to work at university, I was studying film. And I wanted oh, to work wow. in the film industry, in the TV industry. I then decided that that wasn't quite for me. And since then, sort of followed a very up and down path from a career perspective in terms of all the different types of jobs that yeah. I that I did. Um, I did work in the film industry a little bit, um, but more sort of an office role, a um, category analyst kind, um, kind of role. Um, I've worked in the music industry. I've done loads of other different types of jobs. Each job brought me anxiety, stress, but mostly sort of confusion about yeah. what I wanted to do in my life. And it really sort of plagued me for many, many years. And then because of that, I started to get into self-development books. I started yeah. reading about the human mind, human potential, um, how to figure out what your purpose is in life, you know, all those sorts of things. And in that process came across the concepts of manifestation and the law of attraction. Yeah. And it kind of just blew my mind, basically. And since then, this was about sort of 12 years ago, um, I've kind of been obsessed with it a little bit. Yeah. Um, started practicing it in in my own own life mainly. Um, and then kind of decided about four or five years ago that I kind of wanted to make this into my yeah. career and and help other people, not just teach them about manifestation, what manifestation is, which I know we'll, we'll get into in a second, but but mainly to really support people and help people live their best lives basically yeah. and to figure out who they are, figure out what their passions are. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've been doing it for the last few years and I've kind of made it into my Lovely. career in life. You know, the, I, this is one of the reasons why I love having these kind of conversations on the podcast, because I think it's such a difficult thing to navigate anyway, growing up, especially when it comes to like careers and what you want to do. And, you know, there's people, I mean, I was one of those people, like if I hadn't have hit that record button that one day, I would probably still be doing that like IT job that I hated. And it's almost like, you know, you have to try it. You have to kind of take those little risks, you know? And I think you mentioned them about like, you know, the confusion and the anxiety and all that kind of stuff that came with like each job, it's almost like your gut is telling you this isn't for you, which I imagine had a big driving force into now doing what you do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, because um, for a while, when I first discovered manifestation, I thought it was all about sort of using your mind and your feelings. So your mind and your body basically to manifest and attract things back into your life. A big part of the puzzle that was missing for me was the understanding of what the soul is. Yeah. And you mentioned gut, you know, your gut, your intuition. It's all very much linked to this idea that we've all got something inside us that yeah. is guiding us in the right direction. And unfortunately, a lot of people I don't think are attuned to that and, and don't understand those concepts. But for me, a lot of the work that I do and a lot of the work that I do with my clients is about getting them to understand those those signs and those signals yeah. those gut feelings that intuition and and using those of ways of guiding us through through life and yeah. and 
bringing us to situations like this where i'm i'm developing my career with what i love you're developing your career yeah. with what you love and it's it's a it's quite inspiring thing. isn't it in a way because it's almost like i don't know it's almost like pain to purpose and i we, we, i have people on quite a lot that we talk about this kind of concept of you know they go through something so you know traumatic to them that completely changes the direction of their life i'm kind of tired of waiting for those traumatic events to happen because that make me make a change mm -hmm. and it's like we don't need always need that traumatic it, it could mm -hmm. be just something like listening to you go or if you've got that feeling that something's off nine times out of ten it's because it's off with your journey then was there any kind of and obviously feel free to obviously talk about whatever you want here was there like a key turning point for you throughout your you know your personal life or even your career to be like this isn't for me anymore like i need to make this leap now uh yeah <laughs> to answer your question <laughs> where do i start so um a few years ago me and my husband were going through the adoption process oh, wow. and for those people that have been through the adoption process it's a really intense tough experience and we did that for a couple of years and we were just at the point of almost adopting two children wow. and i had a massive mental breakdown yeah um which was that was traumatic for me um but I kind of see it, and this is how I interpret it and how I sort of add meaning to it, that it was the universe coming along and slapping me across the face and basically telling me that I need to do a lot of deep inner work on myself before I can even think about what I want to manifest in, in my life. Yeah. And for so long prior to that, I was avoiding emotions. I was burying certain experiences from my life you know, as deeply down as possible and really just doing that thing of just like trying to power through and it, it didn't work for me. Um, and yeah, like I say, the, the breakdown really was a massive turning point in my journey and really got me to understand what I've just been talking about a few moments ago, which is you need to really like understand yourself on a deep level. You need to do a lot of inner deep work on yourself before, before you can, go out there and, and manifest your best, your yeah. best life because, and I know you talk a lot, a lot about this on, on all of your podcast episodes, you know, men, mental health is so important. We can't avoid it. Um, and we were just saying before we started recording this episode that what, one of the messages that I want to put there out there on, on this episode and all the work that I do is that mental health challenges can coexist with manifesting your dreams. They can go hand in hand. And actually, it's it's probably essential that they do go hand in hand because for me, I was avoiding all those things. Manifested some amazing things like I manifested loads of money. I manifested great jobs, uh, amazing apartments in London, fancy holidays. They were amazing. But there was all this other stuff bubbling underneath that I was just trying to suppress and push down. That meant that I couldn't, I couldn't enjoy those things. Yeah. And so my breakdown taught me that I need to sort all this stuff out that's bubbling underneath. And then once you start to do that, and by the way, I don't think that work will ever be complete. I'm a big believer in, you know, the, the work that I do on myself, the work that I do on my mental health will be an ongoing journey for the rest of my life. But whilst you're doing that stuff, you can then enjoy that other stuff even more, like those, those nice holidays, those great trips, those having a nice house, you know, those things mean so much more when you've done all of this mm. inner work on yourself. Do you know what, it's really interesting. Obviously, firstly, obviously, thank you for sharing that. Mm. Um, there's, a, there's a point that you made, which I don't think anyone's actually ever kind of, I've resonated with in a way about that kind of, all this great stuff is happening, but for some reason, something doesn't quite feel right. Mm -hmm. And there's been so many moments where I should be on cloud nine, whether it's through the podcast, whether it's my personal life, and it just always seems like there's nothing or no, no, there's always seems like there's something missing. Mm -hmm. And I always give myself a hard time for feeling ungrateful. But like, why don't I enjoy this? Like, you should be happy. Like, this is what someone would be dreaming of. And it's almost kind of like only recently, like I've really started therapy properly right. to be like, you need to fix that. You need to get that bit sorted to really kind of like, especially because at the moment, like being like, properly present in the moment yeah like and allowing myself to be in the, like but having that kind of like niggling away at the back you're like 
that needs to be fixed for me to be able to move forward yeah 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 no definitely and oh yeah massive hats off to you for Mm -hmm. doing for doing that work because it feels a bit counterintuitive to be sort of being a manifestation coach and talking about manifesting your dreams but then saying but actually you need to do this really difficult hard stuff first or in at the you know in, in tandem um but yeah massive hats off to you because it, it can be hard can't it i love these conversations <laughs> so talk to me about manifestation okay. because there's a part of me that doesn't believe in manifestation okay i'd think sometimes we really discredit our hard work and stuff that we do and we label it with something else whether it is manifestation mm. or whether it's like look for example mm. In your words, like what is manifestation? Okay, so this is the, and there's lots of different definitions mm. out there, by the way, but this is the definition that I like to use. So manifestation is the science and magic of using your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your behaviors, and your habits to create and live your dream life, basically. Okay. So live the life that you want, desperately want to live. So let's just break it down for a couple of seconds. So the science part and there's a reason that i like to use the word science and magic together yeah they're quite too yeah they're quite contradicting words yeah exactly but i like that because it kind of gets across what for me what manifestation is so the science part is is the stuff that seems very logical to us so taking action for example having an action plan having goals um having helpful healthy habits that supporters and and help us move forward in life you know those are those are the parts of manifestation that we can all get our heads around most of us can kind of understand okay yeah if i do if i do these things they're going to help me to move forward towards the things that i want the magic part is the bit that people sometimes can't get their head around so the magic part of manifestation is some people might call it the woo woo bit some people might call it call it the sort of spiritual bit it's the stuff that isn't as tangible as the scientific stuff. It's the stuff that our minds can't make sense yeah. of sometimes. Um, and the analogy that I like to use of manifestation, in fact, there's a couple of analogies, but I'll use this one. When we're, when we're going somewhere, if we're traveling by car, train, plane, speedboat, whatever <laughs> your choice of transportation is, how many of us out there would be able to tell me or you exactly how that car works? Unless you're, unless you design cars, unless you build cars, unless you're a mechanic, there's not many people out there that would be able to tell me exactly how a car works. But yeah. we know and believe and trust that that car will get us from where we are to where we want to get to. Okay. That's how I like to explain the magic part of manifestation. You don't, we don't have to completely understand it. We don't yeah. have to understand the logistics of manifestation. We just have to have faith and belief that manifestation will help us get from where we are to where we want to get to yeah and the other I like that <laughs> yeah okay you're kind of <laughs> okay i like it <laughs> um, so next time you're in a car or a plane or whatever i mean don't overthink it too much because it <laughs> might make you it might make your journey really boring <laughs> but yeah just just this idea that you just have to kind of have a little bit of faith in it as well yeah so i like that mix of the practical tangible logical stuff that we can do a manifestation yeah mixed with do you know what? I've just got to have a little bit of faith here. Yeah. I've just got to just trust the process. Yeah. Um, so to be fair, so you've kind of almost ticked a massive kind of box for me then, because as much as I was saying, like, because I'm, I'm not educated in manifestation at all. Like I've only ever seen it like on social media and stuff and thought, mm, mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. But for, for what the way you've just explained it then, from the way that my brain's kind of like explaining it to me now, is kind of yes it's it's the hard work but it's that almost kind of it's the faith part yeah. like saying like yeah you can do all this hard work but you're also you're trusting yourself like you're mm. trusting the process you're mm. trusting all these things around it to get to that point as well it, you know it might not just always be the hard work mm-hmm. it could be outside external factors that you can't explain yeah exactly yeah and that you know i always like to say to people that the majority of us are very much run by our minds Mm -hmm. and we've all been conditioned with certain beliefs from from birth um, and certain certain things passed down to us and certain beliefs passed down to us and it's very understandable that when you first discover 
the concepts and theories of manifestation that your mind will start to reject them yeah. because we were talking a little bit about this before we started recording with me the mind is there to protect us and to keep us safe it doesn't want us doing anything dangerous it doesn't want us doing anything scary it also doesn't want us doing anything that it doesn't understand and so when manifestation comes along and it and the law of attraction comes along and it's this idea that we attract things based on our energy frequency all this sort of stuff most of us weren't taught that when we were growing up and so it's very understandable that our mind will be like that's a load of crap basically yeah. don't follow that advice don't listen to andy don't listen to other people that are talking about manifestation doesn't work just carry on doing what you what you're currently doing when for me if I carried on doing what I was doing, it wasn't working for me. I wasn't yeah. happy. So I, I had to expand my mind. I had to open it up and and absorb this information um, for me to progress. You know, to Was progress there any life. kind of, I mean, because to be fair, like I'm saying, like about the whole manifestation thing, like there was the stigma that I kind of, I, even I, I'm guilty of like, well, I don't know if I believe in it. Was there, from, from a personal point of view, when you were having these kind of conversations, um, I guess even internally, like, was there an element of, like, fear of saying, like, this is what I, I'm i using now. This is, like, the practice that I'm going yeah. down and stuff. Yeah, 100%. And even, I don't, don't necessarily have fear nowadays, but I'm, I'm aware that a lot of people won't be on board with what yeah. I'm talking about. And... You know, I've I've lost friends with it, and people have become a bit distant from me um, because of my views and my beliefs. Mm. Um, but and this is part of manifestation. I I choose not to focus on those things. Yeah. I choose to focus on all of the people that do share my beliefs and and theories on on manifestation. And because of that, I'm starting to really grow a lovely community of people, mainly on my Instagram page, um, of people that follow the sh the, the same the same yeah. beliefs or or are very open to well you posted about this recently didn't you about finding your tribe and yeah. like finding like your people yeah and i think you know you, you said a minute ago about the kind of like those beliefs and stuff like being passed down to you know whether it's like older friends or like your parents or family and it's not until you kind of open your eyes to those kind of like conversations or, or even people that okay i'm just doing what everyone else wants me to do mm. i'm not actually doing what i want to do I know. Yeah. and it's honestly that i i wish i could go back in time and tell myself that yeah um but it's a very powerful to be position to be in once you kind of get to that point yeah and you're right I, I wish i could go back and and tell myself these things as well but um i think a lot of people probably feel the, yeah. possibly feel the same um but it's just when I, that moment when i first discovered manifestation and i'd been offered a new way of thinking mm -hmm. and a new outlook on life it was so exciting and empowering to me yeah and that's the word empowerment for me it's kind of encapsulates a lot of manifestation it's it's not this idea of control in your life we can't control everything that happens in the world we can't control everything that happens in a life and i think that's the downfall of a lot of people that follow manifestation is that they think it's about controlling our lives and and creating the perfect life yeah and there are a lot of people out there on social media that are guilty of fueling that belief. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of people that post about manifestation when they're on this really exotic beach or in the, in the massive mansion or they're driving a really nice car. You know, and I, and I think it's dangerous in a way because people think that that's what manifestation is about. Yeah. It's not. Um, you know, manifestation that's for me is just really about feeling empowered to make changes, to go after my dreams um and to just just to live as sort of healthily and as positively as possible and that's not saying that i'm immune to mental health challenges i've already talked about yeah. my breakdown i still suffer with anxiety health anxiety all those sorts of things um but again like some to what i was saying earlier it it's it for me it's about okay and dis despite those things despite my mental health challenges i still feel empowered and manifestation for me is almost like the antidote to my mental health challenges. Yeah. Whereas my anxiety will be telling me I'm rubbish. Um, I need to be fearful of my future. I need to be scared. You know, those things are there daily for me. Mm. When I'm feeling those things, I lean into my manifestation and it's like a fresh breath, a, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. It's like, okay, I, I have got something to look forward to in my life. 
I have got hope, I've got trust, I've got faith, I've got comfort. You know, all the things that manifestation brings to me are kind of like the antidote to my mental health challenges. Do you know what? I can literally feel the passion like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> soaring then. And I think it's incredibly powerful tool to actually have then. Mm. I think when you think of manifestation, like you're saying then about like, you know, the people who will only post about it when they are on the beach and stuff like that. I think you, your immediate thought is like, well, if I manifest winning the lottery, it's going to happen. If mm. I manifest this like Ferrari, it's mm-hmm. going to happen. Whereas it's quite nice to actually see, it doesn't have to be those. Things. Obviously those things are obviously nice if you want them. Whereas for you, I'm guessing it's more of a kind of, it's a tool to use on those bad days. I can manifest health. I can yeah. manifest like something that is going to get me through that. So it doesn't have to yeah. be these grand gestures. No, no, definitely. And I, I can't remember if I said the point earlier, but those material things, I'm a big believer that material things can bring us certain amounts of happiness. I know yeah. there's a lot of stuff out there yeah, that no, money agree, doesn't buy us happiness and all this sort of stuff. I think they do, they bring us temporary happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't give us long fulfilled happiness, but they, they're nice things to have in yeah. life. And I don't want people to think at all that I'm saying that you can't go out and get those things because I think those things are really exciting and they bring a lot of joy and fun and happiness to our lives. I'm just saying that you need to just work on all this stuff yeah. that's deeper than that first. Um, and then usually by accident, you start to manifest yeah. more money. You start to manifest like nice holidays and nice experiences, you know, because you, you, you're going back to, you're going back to basics. Yeah. You're going back to your soul. You're going back to your authenticity. You know, once, once you start showing up authentically, once you start living your life based on your soul rather than your ego, that is when magic and life starts happening. And sometimes That's we do that accidentally. Like, I don't know how you feel about your journey, but it, you know, do you do you feel that your your soul is kind of guiding you on this journey? That's your kind of authenticity, or I think so. And I'm I'm at a real kind of I was, I was kind of, we kind of touched upon it earlier. Like I'm at a real crossroad with my journey now, where I'm almost tired of the naivety that I say like around it. Yeah. Like oh, I don't know how this has happened, mm. or like oh, this wouldn't have happened if that trauma hadn't happened. It was like well, actually. I, in a weird way, now having this conversation, I've almost manifested getting to this point Mm. because I've actually, I've trusted myself. I've trusted the gut. There is certain parts of this journey that I'm like, I I don't really have a clue how that's happened, but quite clearly it was supposed to happen. And those things like, I don't have an answer for. Mm. So whether that is manifestation, whether Mm. it's just like the universe or whether it's just like pure coincidence, Mm. is I guess it's the magic that, you were talking about like I, yeah. I don't have an answer for those things yeah yeah i mean there's a couple of ways of looking at it isn't it? you can it's interesting that you use the word coincidence because that's often a phrase that gets bounced back when we talk about manifestation yeah. it's like oh it's just a coincidence that these things happen kind of got a choice haven't we we can kind of think of them as coincidences yeah or we can kind of think of them as something bigger than us guiding us on this journey yeah. now i choose to kind of believe that there is the universe guiding me on my journey yeah. and that gives me a lot of comfort yeah and it gives me um a lot of joy it gives me it makes me feel that life is this it can be messy but this sort of beautiful yeah beautiful journey that that we're all that we're all on rather than just putting it down to oh yeah it's just luck or coincidence yeah. oh it is what it is yeah exactly yeah, yeah. It, it, again it comes back to this this the word that i like to use which is empowerment you know i just Manifestation for me is just giving me that feeling of empowerment and autonomy. Yeah. In you know, in, in my life. Um and not only that, but like, you know, we we talk about coping mechanisms quite a lot on the show. And I'm a big believer in like, regardless of what it is, as long as you're not hurting something someone, yeah. Like if that's what gets you through like your darkest days. Mm-hmm. I don't believe there is one person on this planet that can tell you that's the wrong thing for you to be doing. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I, I I I totally agree, and that's just all I'm trying to do with my work is just put what what's helped me in my life, what helps me in my life. Um, another key message for me, really, as well, is just kind of based on that is it, I do use manifestation to as a coping mechanism. Yeah. But one thing I've learned since my breakdown is that I can't suppress or avoid 
those challenging days, those challenging yeah. emotions as well. You know, there's a lot of talk in manifestation about raising your vibration. And it's this idea that the more we raise our vibration, the more we attract high vibrational situations into our life. So yeah. this is the law of attraction, basically. Like energy attracts like energy. So high vibrational energy, we will attract more positive stuff into our lives. And I'm a great believer in that. However, you can't fully raise your vibration until you acknowledge and confront the things that are kind of weighing your vibration down. Okay, so I don't particularly like the phrase good vibes only, because for me, it's the only part. I I get why people are into it, and I get that it's a bit of a movement, and it's very popular to see on prints and artwork and postcards and stuff like that. It's the only bit for me, because yes, we should be striving for good vibes. We should be trying to raise our vibration. But like I say, you can't fully do that until you also look at the the shitty vibes. Yeah. Can we swear on this? Yeah. <laughs> those, those... Just not the C word. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sensitive ears. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like I don't depending on the that word. Depending on the subject. Okay. I'm I won't joking. be using it in today's episode. Don't worry. Um, so, yeah, you, we really have to acknowledge and work through those rubbish emotions as well. Yeah. Um, but they're part of the journey. Yeah. Like, I, I completely agree. And I've never looked at it from like a, the, the kind of like the whole good vibes only thing but i regardless of the emotion like i say it all the time you do not give yourself a hard time when you're happy or like you're laughing there is no reason why you should be giving yourself a hard time when you feel sad you feel anxious or you're having those down days yeah. you're allowed to have those days yeah. it's perfectly fine yeah yeah and if you allow yourself those days and you allow yourself the opportunity to work through those emotions what you do is you create space mm -hmm in your body we all we all store emotions in our body based on past experiences and something that happened to us when we were five six seven years old if we haven't processed the emotion attached to that experience that emotion will be somewhere in our body that's interesting and there's loads of like books and stuff yeah, yeah. it's not my concept <laughs> there's loads like, of books. wow <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> this guy is like a prophet I'm not, owning, I'm not owning this concept by the way um but the idea is that when you when you work through those emotions, and that can be through loads of different means, whatever works for you. For me, it's therapy. You mentioned therapy yourself. Just talking to people, you know, even this conversation is starting to move energy around my body. Yeah. You know, the more I talk about my breakdown, other stuff that's happened to me in life, the more I talk about it, or the more I write it down in my journal, for example, the more I meditate. You know, whatever works for you, the more you give yourself the time and space to process those emotions the more it frees up space in your energy field, your aura, some people yeah. call it your aura. And when you start freeing up space in your energy field or your aura, you then are kind of saying to the universe, I'm ready for, I'm ready for yes. something more positive to enter my life. But you can't do that unless you process yeah. that energy because the energy will just stay stuck there until you kind of say, right, come on then, yeah. let's, let's have a chat about it's it. It's almost like a bird in a cage, isn't it? Yeah. You've, you've got a kind of, you've got to process it. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, I think the both of us are kind of sat here better for, you know, like exploring that emotion and kind mm. of the therapy and, you know, utilizing like coping mechanisms. Um, if there was, if there was anyone listening to this who is having a bit of a shit time of it at the moment, like what advice would you give them? Well, just give yourself that time and that space really. But, but also, and again, this is what I was saying earlier about manifestation being a little bit of an antidote to these things, mm. to these difficult things. Whilst working through those emotions, also just hold it in your heart. It doesn't have to be there every single day. It doesn't have to be a dominant thought, but just hold it somewhere that you you can get through these situations and that you there is hope and faith of you working towards a better life and a better future. Yeah. Um, it's not to ignore those emotions, but you can still, we're all containers of lots of different emotions and we, we're all capable of feeling every emotion that is out there. So even on those rubbish days when we're feeling like shit, just remind yourself that I've got the capacity to feel happiness. I've got the capacity to feel joy. It's not to ignore these shitty emotions over here. We'll stay with them for now, but just somewhere in the back of your mind or in your heart or your soul, you've got the capacity to be happy and to feel fulfilled in your life. 
So that is kind of what I would say to people. I feel like I forgot we were recording then. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, Taylor, listen, <laughs> listen to this. Um, have you always been a spiritual person? No, no. Did you, because I, I, the question around spirituality is always, is because it's not part of my journey that I've really ever explored. Um, but I'll be intrigued to see how that spiritual journey started for you. Yeah, spirit, the word spiritual still makes me cringe a little bit. Yeah, it's like... Because I, <laughs> I've, and this is completely wrong, by the way, but I, there's a part of me that still believes that spirituality is sitting on a meditation cushion, meditating, doing yoga, um, going on like spiritual retreats. Yeah. And I've done all those things, by the way, and I love them. Yeah. And that is a massive part of my spirituality, doing those things. But I want my, one of my messages to be, talk a lot about messages today, what I want about. There's a lot of messages to send, <laughs> isn't <there>? but, <laughs> Someone's inbox is full. <laughs> <laughs> but um, spirituality to me, and my developed understanding of what spirituality is, is just me being in touch with my authenticity and, and soul. So I use this often with my clients when we, when we're talking about spirituality, I believe that I am being spiritual when I'm sat on my meditation cushion and then literally 10 minutes later, after I've done my meditation, dancing in my kitchen to Britney Spears. Like maybe my top Highly half. recommended. Yeah, highly recommended. I, 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 I feel that I am being spiritual in equal measures in both of those experiences. And the reason is, is that I am connecting with my authenticity and my soul. So I, I believe that whenever yeah. I'm connected to who I am supposed to be, that is me being spiritual. Now, things like meditation, uh, journaling, um, you know, all those things that I've already mentioned, they are really powerful ways of turning down the rubbish in our lives, yeah. turning down the crap in our lives, and really connecting with that authenticity and that, that soul part of us. So they, those are really important things, but we can still be spiritual when we're just going about our everyday business, doing whatever whatever we're doing. And, you know, when I'm having this conversation with you, I feel like I'm connecting to my spirituality. Yeah. When I'm having conversations with my clients, I feel like I'm connected to my spirituality because I feel that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's so simple, isn't mm. it? And it's, I, I kind of almost get annoyed at myself for having that kind of, not not so much now, but obviously back in the day when I started my own self development journey of having that kind of almost bad view and like that that stigma like around spirituality, around meditation, around mm. all these things that mm. we're kind of looking at these things like that make us better. Yeah, it's the same as like eating fruit or going mm. to the gym. There is always some kind of like negative like that is always led. Yeah. with any of those things and it's like yeah. well, it's actually these things that aren't we wouldn't do them if they didn't make us feel like exactly. good yeah i know i, I it's, it's so important that you've just picked up on that point because you know there's there's a lot of buzzwords out there isn't it, at the moment mm -hmm. and social media teaches us that you have to meditate you have to do yoga you have to do all these things you have to journal part of it is because it's it's true like yeah. like you say these things do help us i think the problem is that we sometimes beat ourselves up if we don't do meditation every day if yeah. we don't do we don't do something spiritual every day but like i say you can you can still be connecting to your spirituality by doing the most mundane everyday job as long as you're present and you'll be mindful and you're you're living authentically then to me that has been spiritual yeah. but to be fair, another point that to make uh, from what you've just said is like it, it doesn't work for everyone like meditation i find very difficult mm -hmm. like i'm a lot better at it but i'd, I'd still I, it takes me a longer time to what other people do. Journaling, however, I could sit there and write pages and pages and pages. Mm. It's about allowing yourself to explore these kind of avenues, whether it's manifestation, journaling, therapy, yoga, retreats. Just try it. Yeah. Because until you're in a position was actually saying, like, actually, no, that would never work for me. Blah, blah, blah. Unless you try it, you're not, you're not going to know. Yeah. Yeah. And th that's, again, that's a really good point. It's, we're all different. Different things will work for different people. And for me, a lot of my self-development journey, a lot of my spiritual journey was just finding those things that mm. work for me. And I always say this to my clients, you know, I throw a lot of concepts and ideas at my clients, but the key point that I always make is just feel into what resonates with you mm -hmm. because that is a big 
sign that that's right for you. You know, some of the things that we've been talking about today might not be for everyone, but if there's just one little bit that resonates with you, then just take, just take that. You don't have to take everything. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to do all of these things that we've talked about today. You you know, you just, just, just take one little thing and that, that could be enough to change your life. You know, if you just, if you just went full, full steam with, with that particular, particular idea. But to me, that's what's exciting about the self-development world is that, you know, myself, you, we're, we're all like, we're just putting lots of ideas and thoughts out there for people to explore. And if it works for them, great. If it doesn't, then just keep exploring and find something that does work for you. It is, isn't it? So it's it's a whole like dating thing as well. It's like with that, that saying of like, well, there's either plenty for plenty more fish in the sea or like, you just have, you just haven't met the right one yet. It's exactly the same yeah. when it comes to this whole self development. I mean, obviously, I know there's a lot of differences. To be fair, <laughs> I'm just kind of latching on very, very loosely. Yeah, but until you kind of like go out and put yourself out of your comfort zone, talk to people that you wouldn't normally talk to, or you know, go and do things that you wouldn't normally do. Like, it's about finding what works for you. There isn't a one size fits all, and you, it's you know, you kind of, and I'm saying this from personal experience. I shied away from all this kind of self-development like world for a huge period of time until I had to, yeah. until I had to like do something because I was scared of what the alternative would be. Um, and now I'm in a position where like, well, my life is a hell of a lot much like more better because I allowed myself to explore it. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad. We're all mad. <laughs> um, you mentioned the B word a minute ago. And obviously we talk about music quite a lot on the show um music is one of my biggest coping mechanisms if i'm having a bad day my headphones are in like it's a it's a mood changer or or even if i like i want to sit and have a little bit of a cry and stuff it's it's the music for me that does that um quickly before we get into those songs that do that for you is there any other coping mechanisms that you utilize other than manifestation when you are having those bad days uh music yeah <laughs> what's the it's b word by the way you said i'd mentioned the b word britney oh <laughs> are we not allowed to say britney well, you can say now? britney all you want yeah. okay um, it just it just i don't know i, just, I don't know where i was going no with. i and i'm not just saying this because you brought it up but um and you will you will know that people that have followed me on instagram for a while now will know that you know music is a big cope a big coping tool mm. for me um I love, absolutely love to dance. Yeah. Um, it's great for my mind. It gets me to just switch off a little bit. But going back to what we were talking about earlier, it helps to shift some of that physical energy that we're storing as well. Okay. The physical movement. But yeah, I absolutely love music. I love all types of music. I've always had a quite an eclectic taste in music. Um, so yeah, I def- definitely music. Is there a song that you like? As soon as you hear it, I'm up dancing. Do you know what? I knew because I've obviously listened to your podcast episodes and I knew you were going to ask me this question. <laughs> and do you know what? I hate this question with passion. <laughs> it's like, what's your favorite film? Because I, <laughs> film, I studied film at uni. What's your it favorite depends film? depends what day it is. Exactly. I've never got the answer prepared. Um, yeah, and I'm not saying this as a cop out, but it obviously depends what mood I'm in. It depends what, what, what type of genre I want to listen to. But and people will be able to see this if they go on my Instagram. They will see me dancing to the song. But Jamiroquai, 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 have I said that wrong? <laughs> um, Canned Heat is oh. a big one for me. So, and for for various reasons, I love the message. In yeah. It, which is kind of relates to a lot of what we've been talking about today, which is just this idea that, do you know what? When days are shit or I'm going through a tough time, just dance. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying it will take all your troubles away those problems and those troubles will probably still be there. But do you know what? For five minutes or six minutes, however long the song is, just go in your kitchen or wherever you want to go and just dance your heart out, okay? And that, for me, makes me feel better. So that's why I like that song because it's a great song. Yeah. The lyrics kind of relate to what I'm trying to do when I'm dancing to that song. And yeah, it's just it just makes me feel good. I love that. I think that's one of the best answers I've actually had for that question. (laughs) So I think people always go for like, they try and say something cool. It was like, was well, like no, like you, not cool. <laughs> no, but no. I, I mean, I'm a big Jamiro quite space cowboy. I'm a big, big fan of his. Um, but it's like I almost see like the cogs turn. That's why I never like send it out as a brief. Like this is what I'm going to ask you, especially to people who haven't listened to it before, because 
it's like I want to hear what the first song is that they say. Yeah. But sometimes, you, depending on who it is, you can almost see like, oh, what what can I say that's going to make me look cool? And I was just yeah. like, I don't care. My like, if yeah. I was ever asked, like, all day, every day, it'll be bewitched. Say la vie for you. Yeah, one hundred and ten percent. I don't love that song. I don't care if anyone wants to judge me. Always gets me up. Okay. Um, Good. On the flip side of that, is there a song that kind of puts you in your feels or brings out that emotion? And again, I know I shouldn't have done this, but I prepared this answer. <laughs> and now I can't remember what I was going to say. And I can't remember the name of the guy. I, I'm really sorry to this guy if, if he's out there listening. <laughs> uh, I think his name's Dean Lewis. Oh, okay. Yes. I think yeah, he's yeah. quite an upcoming yeah. artist. Um, he does a lot of really... They're quite sad songs, mm-hmm. but they're really sort of just raw and they really touch me in a lot of ways. So him, um, I then I've then also got the song that I had at my wedding as my first dance. Which this is <laughs> how long have we got? By the way, we do need to wrap this up soon. just very very quickly. It is um, when you believe, which was sung by Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston for a, a Disney film, not maybe not Prince in film, Egypt, Prince of Egypt, yeah, but. The Leon Jackson version. So this is a very complex. X Factor. Story. Yeah. So yeah, he okay. sang it as his. Um, the winner's single. He sang it as the winner's single. Yeah. And the day that he won X Factor is the day before that I met my now husband. Wow. Which was almost 16 years ago. Um, and we had it as our first dance yeah. song at our wedding. Um, and again, I like it because I attach it to that memory of meeting my husband, but also. Um, the the lyrics are all about yeah, well, believing when you believe believing in miracles believing that things will get better and at the time i was in the closet i wasn't yeah. out and i met my now husband and it was a really scary but really exciting time and that song really helped me to think that do you know what it's really scary that. but i'll get through i'll get through it and it will be amazing on the other side which it now is now look at you yeah so but, that's that's quite an emotional but also happy yeah sort of a but, yeah, song. but it doesn't have to be like bad feels. No. It could be like appreciative. Yeah. Sadness. Yeah. If that's <laughs> yeah. even a, I'm going to TM that or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a song that you would put in a box, kick off a cliff, never hear again? Oh, no. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting <laughs> this question. Um, I'm not a massive fan of songs that have dance moves to them. Okay. So, Macarena. Yep. Um, Remember Last Ketchup? Last Ketchup. Yep. That what one. was that? Oh, was that one right in the Chacha slide? Chacha slide, yeah. definitely put that <laughs> in a box. Um, like tragedy, you know. Yeah. And I feel bad because some of these are actually quite good songs. Yeah. But I just, well, going back to the, this is like a nice bookend to the beginning of the the podcast episode. One of my pet peeves is like being at a wedding or whatever, or being at a party, and the DJ putting those songs on. It really makes me cringe. <laughs> Um, probably because I don't want to really be told what to do with my body. Like I want to just dance the way that I, I want to dance. I don't want to slide to the left. Yeah, exactly. If I want to slide to the right, then I'll slide to the right. I don't want to do five hops this yeah, time. Exactly, I want to do four. Exactly. I just want to like feel into my body and just feel the music and just dance. So maybe I don't never thought of it, but maybe that is part of it. Yeah. But yeah, those sorts of songs. Apologies, because I know they're they're proper floor fillers. But for me. I will come off the floor at that point. No, Joe, you know what? They <laughs> respect it. It's whatever gets the body moving. Um, uh, you have been brilliant to waffle with. Like, thank, <laughs> thank you me. for one for obviously traveling down to obviously to the studio or is it down to the studio? Up to the studio? Um, down. Down to the studio. Yeah. Um, to have a waffle with me. And um, final thing for anyone who's listening, want to know where you are? Like, where can they find you? Okay, so I'm mainly on Instagram. That's my main sort of social media profile. So my handle is at Coach Andy Downs. Um, my website is www.andydowns.com. And there's loads of contact details on there. So you'll find out all about me. Nice. So we'll details. link everything back anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me for a waffle. Well, no, seriously, I've, I really enjoyed it. And thank you so much. I'm a massive fan of what you're doing and all of your work. And I'm really excited to see where you're going to take it. I can't do that bit. (laughs) See you next week.